seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. MDS do we have ignition? The Voyager 1, NASA's most travelled spacecraft, is still travelling through uncharted regions of the cosmos, nearly 50 years after its launch. Scientists are baffled because this legendary space probe appears to be acting strangely and is sending terrifying data back to Earth. Join us as we discuss the strange data the Voyager spacecraft is sending back to Earth in today's episode. The Voyager 2 spacecraft is one of the great testaments of human ingenuity. More than four decades after launch, the spacecraft continues to function even in the harshest imaginable condition of deep space. Despite being billions of miles away, the tenacious spacecraft continues to send back amazing and even terrifying discoveries to the mission controllers on Earth. One of the discoveries was a huge wall of fire when Voyager 2 crossed the boundary of our solar system. What happens at this boundary and how did the events at this boundary affect us on Earth? What has made the Voyager 2 spacecraft last as long as it has and still be able to remain in communication with the Earth? Well, while the arrays of sensors and transmitters are important, they are nothing without the power source. In fact, they would have stopped sending back signals many years ago if the power source had run out. The Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft are not powered by solar. That wouldn't work when they are so far from the sun. Instead, they use radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTG, for their energy. Each of the Voyager probes has three RTGs, and they use plutonium-238 for their fuel source. As the isotope decays, it produces heat, which is converted to electrical energy. When the Voyagers initially launched, they were generating 470 watts at 30 volts DC, but over time that has reduced. But it's not just the fuel declining, as the thermocouples used in the system also degraded over time. As of 2011, the Voyagers were generating just under 270 watts each, about 76% of the power at the beginning of the mission. However, the spacecraft has an additional source of power on board, which is also critical to its operation. They have small thrusters that allow them to be reoriented to face the Earth for communication when necessary. These thrusters have a tank of hydrazine fuel that they draw from, and even though they only work in bursts, they will eventually run out. Voyager 1 had done this years earlier, and that was because it had fewer detours than Voyager 2. The former stopped over at Uranus and Neptune to conduct flybys. However, Voyager 2 was the first spacecraft to directly sample the electrically charged hazes or plasmas filling into stellar space and the solar system's farthest outskirts. Voyager 2 was able to analyze solar winds, the composition and behavior of plasma particles, the interaction of cosmic rays, the structure and direction of magnetic fields, and other traits that define the edges of the solar system. Even today, scientists are still publishing papers based on the data Voyager 2 returned as it was escaping from the solar system. The crossing into interstellar space by Voyager 2 has helped us learn a lot about the boundary of the solar system. While showing us entirely new things, the event has also challenged some ideas we had about the boundary before. However, to get the correct perspective of Voyager 2's latest findings, it's important to know how the Sun works. Contrary to what you might have thought, the Sun isn't a quietly burning ball providing illumination. Instead, it's a raging nuclear furnace speeding through the galaxy at about 450,000 miles an hour as it orbits the galactic center. Of course, you may not feel the high speed because of the massive size of the solar system, but apart from the speed and enormous heat, the Sun is a constant source of magnetic fields, causing its surface to constantly throw off a breeze of electrically charged particles called the solar wind. This gust spreads out in all directions, carrying the Sun's magnetic field with it. Eventually, the solar wind runs into the interstellar medium, the debris from ancient stellar explosions that lurks in the spaces between stars. Like oil and water, the solar wind and the interstellar medium don't perfectly mix. This makes the solar wind create a bubble within the interstellar medium known as the heliosphere. According to records from the two voyages, this bubble stretches about 11 billion miles from the Sun at its leading edge. It envelops the Sun, all eight planets, and much of the outer objects orbiting our star. Note, though, that the heliosphere acts as a shield. It protects everything within it from most of the galaxy's highest energy radiation. Without it, your DNA would have been tampered with. However, the heliosphere has an outer edge known as the heliopause, which is where interstellar space starts from. 
With the four spacecraft sent out beyond the environs of the solar system in the 1970s, three of them, Voyagers 1 and 2 and Pioneer 11, were all heading in the direction of the solar apex. This means they were going in the apparent path of the Sun's travel in the Milky Way galaxy, and thus would be expected to reach the heliopause earlier than Pioneer 10, which was headed in the direction of the heliospheric tail. To conserve more energy, NASA permanently turned off non-essential instruments in November 1998, leaving seven instruments still operating. This was 21 years after launch. Through the turn of the century, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, continued to receive ultraviolet and particle fields data. For example, in January 2001, an immense shockwave that had blasted out of the outer heliosphere in July 2000 finally reached Voyager 2. During its six-month journey, the shockwave had plowed through the solar wind, sweeping up and accelerating charged particles. Voyager 2 sent back valuable information on the high-energy, shock-energized ion. In August 2007, Voyager 2 passed the termination shock and then entered the heliosheath. By November 2017, the spacecraft was 116.167 AU, which is about 10.8 billion miles or about 17.378 billion kilometers from Earth, moving at a velocity of 9.6 miles per second or 15.4 kilometers per second relative to the Sun. It was headed in the direction of the constellation Telescopium. On November 5, 2018, Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause. This is the boundary where solar wind influence ends. From that point on, Voyager 2 was in what is known as interstellar medium, or space. Voyager 1 had crossed it years before, although there were controversies. But at this point, Voyager 2's plasma instrument detected the leap in particle density as protons, electrons, and other charged particles struck the instrument. It also recorded the temperature between 30,000 and 50,000 Kelvin. To ensure that both vintage robots continue to return the best scientific data possible from the frontiers of space, mission engineers had to implement a new plan to manage them. The plan required making difficult choices, particularly about instruments to keep running and thrusters. The spacecraft is billions of miles away with signals taking more than 17 hours to reach us. However, Voyager 2 continues to go strong. Let's hear what you think of the enduring Voyager mission in the comment section.